Okay, so that's what Cochrane Byte is all about in Jigsawing, and that's why ZFS is fundamentally a very safe operating system in terms of storing your data. Now that's not very useful unless it's easy to use, right? Because let's face it, it's always a pain in the arse setting up partitions and stuff like that when you're installing an operating system. Thankfully, ZFS fixes this as well. So, if you've ever installed um, Linux on a system, those, that file system layout should look reasonably familiar to you. Normally, what people will do is they'll set up a root partition, which will be in your a reasonable size, so you can install your operating system onto that. You'll have a swap partition, which is used for the paging file, um, as opposed to Windows, which just stores it in a file. Um, and then you've got your home directory, which is where you keep all your stuff. And generally, you keep that in a separate partition, so if you blow away your operating system, you don't lose all of your data, which is kind of handy. Now, in a traditional file system, what you do is you split that up into partitions. So there's partition 1, partition 2, partition 3, and then you put the file systems in then, yeah? That means that at install time, you have to say, right, okay, I want you know, a 1 gig swap partition, and I want a 16 gig root partition, and all that. So you have to know in advance how big those file systems are going to be. And if you then find yourself in the unfortunate situation of having to change the size of those partitions, you've got a problem, because then you have to use partition resizing tools. And they're never quite guaranteed to work without screwing something up. Um, on top of that, you then have to, if you're wanting to do things like combining disks together to make you know, a logical disk, so say for example you want to mirror your data so that the data written to two disks at once, so if one of those disks fails, you've still got the data on the other disk. Um, what you'd normally use is a hardware RAID controller for that, um, or even software RAID implementation like LVM on Linux. And what that does is it basically takes those two disks and it sort of merges them together, does the magic stuff in the background, and then it sort of presents to the operating system this fake disk that's built up out of these smaller disks, the actual physical disks. Um, and from, from the operating system's point of view, that's a bit of a problem because it doesn't know anything about these disks anymore. All it sees is that mirror disk. So if one of these disks fails, the operating system doesn't even know unless you've got some sort of third-party tool that's been made by the hardware RAID manufacturer to tell you about that mirror failing. So these are all obviously problems. File, you know, managing your file systems. Generally, you don't worry about your file systems because you install your operating system and that's then done. But once you start messing around with this kind of thing, it can be just, it's a pain in the ass. ZFS fixes that, by taking away all that rubbish in the centre, and it introduces the idea of storage pools. So the idea is you take the disks that you're using to store your data, and you just have one big pool, that's just a big chunk of storage space. And then the file systems that you want, so you, you can still have your root device, your swap device, all the rest of it, they just sort of grab storage out of the storage pool as you go along, so that means that you know, if, say, for example, you decide to go on a downloading rampage and you want to fill up your the remaining um, home space in your home directory with whatever kind of video files you might like, um, you can do that. <laughs> what was that sniggering all about? I don't know what kind of the video files you download. Um, <laughs> so you can do that quite happily with ZFS. You can just use the space wherever you need it. Now, that's all well and good until you run out of space, because obviously, you know, disks are only so big, they can only store so much data. Now, in a traditional file system, you've got a folder on a file system and a disk, you fill that disk, you can't put anything more in that folder. ZFS actually allows you to just shove more disks in to the end pool. So, you basically, while the system is running, you don't even need to reboot OpenSolaris or whatever operating system you're using, and you just whack another disk in, shove it in the pool, and then it automatically starts using that space. So it's kind of handy, especially, obviously this is really handy for servers and things like that where you really don't want to take the system down and so forth. Um, but even just in a desktop system, you know, having that flexibility is really quite handy. Question? It's not a bit of pain if you're using it maybe in a home system, but once it drives, you never really know what's driving your data system. Doesn't matter in ZFS, that's the whole point. Uh, but what if you wanted to, like, maybe, uh, you generally wouldn't use this kind of, I mean, what you would do is you'd have a separate storage pool on you. If you wanted to use ZFS in your portable drive, which typically you wouldn't because most things can't read ZFS, you'd generally use something like FAT32 in a portable drive, so that even Windows can handle that, yeah? 
Um, but if you wanted to have ZFS on your own portable drive, you'd create your own pool. So that big pool blob there, you can have as many of them as you want. So quite often, for example, in a server situation, what you'll want to do is you'll have a, a mirrored uh, root partition so that if one of your disks fails, your operating system doesn't go away. Um, but you'll maybe have something like a RAID 5 across your data pool because you're less worried about that data going away. Um, so what you do is you set up a mirror pool for your root partition and you set up a RAID 5 pool for your data partition. And that's actually what I do in my home server. I've just got a single disk for my root partition because I don't really care if it blows up, I'll just reinstall OpenSLARS. Um, and then my data, which I rather would like to keep, um, is in a RAID 5 partition. Okay, so that, that's the idea of pool storage. It basically gets you away from the whole idea of having to mess around with partitions and so on and so forth. So how do you create a partition? Sorry, how do you, how do you create a, a pool? Okay, so this is the open slur system that I demoed last week. Yeah, um, What I've done is I've actually added in some more disks. What I'm going to do is use pfexec to run that with administrator so I actually get access to the disks. And what you can see is I've got my C3D0 is the name of the disk that um, my uh, root partition is installed on. And then you can see I've got a bunch of virtual hard disks that I'm using in uh, VirtualBox, which each are two gigs in size, it doesn't really matter, but this is how you would see your normal disks. And if I do a zpool list command, that shows me the pools that I've currently got. So I've got our pool, which is, oh, that's interesting. I don't have the full screen. I don't have the full screen. Projector isn't showing the entire screen, so what I'll do is I will make it fit manually. Is that showing up? That's better. Okay, so I've got this pool called our pool, which um, is the default pool that ZFS has already created for my um, storage. And if I do a little status on that, I can see what disks it's um, built up of. And you can see it's built of C3D0, which is the disk that I flagged up there. Now, let's say we wanted to use all of those other disks to make another pool. Um, so let's say, I don't know, uh, well, first thing I'll have to do is become root, because also I'm doing a, an administrative task. So now that I've become root, it's actually very, very easy to create a pool in ZFS. It's one command. So zpool, I'm managing ZFS pools. I'm going to create a pool, give it a name, uh, let's call it data. Um, and then you say either the name of a disk, if you just want a basic pool on one disk, or you can say a special keyword to create a RAID uh, implementation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mirror. So that means that the data is written to two drives at once. And what I'll do is I'll use uh, C5T0D0 and C5T1D0, which is just the Slars code names for two of my virtual box disks. Yeah? It goes off, looks at the disks, that's it done. That's me created my storage pool. Yeah? So now if I do Z pool list, there we go, I've now got a second pool. Two gigs in size because you only get one disk's worth of usable space because you're writing the same data to both disks because it's a mirror. And it's there. And if I now do, um, I can also start, just start writing to that automatically because ZFS automatically creates a file system in that uh, pool. Um, and if I do, you know, a DF in slash data, that shows me, there we go, two gigs available. So, say I want to add some, some more storage to that. Um, again, nice and easy. Z pool, add data, mirror, C5, T2, D0, and C5, T3, D0. Goes off, looks at disks, makes a file system, and suddenly, I've got more space in my file system. Yeah, so that's how easy it is. Obviously, you have to physically put the disks into the server, which is maybe a little bit more complicated. But you know, you want to be, you want some extra space. That's all you need to do. 
um, which is brilliant for me because that means that when I finally run out of space in my server, I don't have to mess around with rearranging where all my files are kept. Okay, so that's how to create a, um, a storage pool in ZFS.